My name is Stephen Barbridge and I'm a research manager at NAB Asset Management. Today I'm joined by Barry Dargan, CEO and Portfolio Manager at Intermediate Investment Partners. Thanks for your time today, Barry. Hi, Stephen. Can you tell us um, a little bit about Intermediate Investment Partners? Intermediate uh, Investment Partners was set up in uh, 2014. Um, it is a boutique uh, global investment management company. Uh, we manage a uh, relatively concentrated portfolio of around 40 stocks and we are looking for high quality um, long-term growth and return companies that we want to buy at a price that we think undervalues their long-term growth prospects. Um, the firm is uh, backed by National Australia Bank who has a minority stake in the business but it's majority owned by uh, the partners that uh, founded the business back in 2014. We're now three and a half years into our track record and uh, we're pleased to say that that's, uh, that's all going well. And in your time before Intermediate Investment Partners, can you sort of talk us through the, a bit about your background, the journey so far? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I started, um, uh, I came out of university with an economics degree and then became a chartered accountant and then went into the investment world uh, as a sell-side analyst covering mostly technology stocks uh, in London and then moved to Japan and uh, had a spell there with uh, doing sell-side uh, technology research as well. I went to the buy side um, in 1996 with uh, MFS, Investment Management. I did a couple of years in Boston with them, and then I opened their Tokyo office, more time in Tokyo, uh, covering Asian sectors, and then began managing portfolios uh, around 2001. And in 2010, uh, I uh, joined Artisan Partners, did uh, three years there, uh, opened their London office and set up their global equity strategy. And, uh, and then myself and um, some people uh, that I work with at Artisan uh, came and we set up uh, Intermede um, in uh, 2014. And with Intermede, how would you define the, the investment philosophy that, that yourself and the team um, adopt? Yeah, so we take the view that if you find high quality, long-term growth, compounding businesses and with great managements in, a, in attractive industries that are innovating and growing their their businesses um, and you make sure that you don't overpay for these if you buy them at a discount to the intrinsic value then you're going to be in a good place so that's really what we're looking for we really want to try and find um, a, a relatively concentrated portfolio of the highest quality long-term compounding businesses and, and looking through your investment process valuation is, is kind of one of the, the key planks of the process can you talk about how how you think about that and how that plays into the research yeah absolutely yeah we do we do think valuation is a key discipline uh, so, you know, we're not paying any price for, for high quality businesses. It's got to make sense for us. We recognise that a great business uh, doesn't always make a great investment if you don't buy it at the right price. And uh, so when we're, we're thinking about valuation, we really want to look at all aspects of the business to figure out what we think is intrinsic value for a business. So that will include looking at the static multiples for the business going back through time. We will look across the global peer group for a comparative of what we're paying for it. We will do a discounted cash flow calculation, we will do a spreadsheet and really build out where we think the forecasts for the business are going to go. And one of the things we, we pay a lot of attention to is the free cash flow yield. Um, and we have a, a minimum hurdle of 4% on a prospective unlevered basis. And we think that really provides quite a bit of cushion in terms of safety. Um, that, you know, if you're getting a 4% yield on a, on a, on a business, it's, it's not a bad yield in a, in a low yield environment. Uh, and of course, we're looking for that compounding growth that's going to drive up that yield uh, year in and year out. So. Um, and we will always want a discount from intrinsic value when we when we buy a, buy and own a stock. And so there's a lot of work that goes into those parts of the process. At the other end, how do you think about um, the sell discipline that yourself and the team? Yeah, that's right. So you know the intrinsic value forms the price target of the business, and so um, if if the stock price gets up towards the price target, we're going to be thinking about redeploying the basis points uh, into into other names that have not yet performed. So that, that's one way that we'll end up selling a stock. Um, we will also uh, sell a stock if the thesis changes, if it, the thesis gets broken, if you like. So we bought it for a reason and then that's not playing out and we, we lose conviction in the name because uh, we only want to own the highest conviction names that we, that we have. Uh, then we'll sell a, a stock in that situation. The only other time we might sell a stock is if we find something that's better, that's, a, that's kind of a comparator to it. Um, so that would be a substitution. And so when you think about the portfolio in, in your role as portfolio manager, what sort of guidelines do you kind of think about as to minimum and maximum positions of, of stocks there, given the high, the high conviction? That's right, yeah. So we want to make sure that we're rewarded for owning great stocks and have enough 
uh, allocation of basis points to any stock that we're going to own. So we have a minimum cutoff of 100 basis points. We won't go lower than that in any stock that we own. Uh, we want to have a five percent. Uh, we, we have a cutoff of five percent at cost uh, on the higher end. Uh, so we're playing in that space one to five. Uh, so typical position sizing for us is around two to three, uh, and uh, that naturally gets us to around 40 stocks in the portfolio. Okay, and, and, and being quite a concentrated portfolio, thinking about the sectors of the market, are there sectors that you tend to avoid because of certain characteristics? Yeah, so we, you know, we are looking for these high quality compounding names that, that can, uh, can grow and don't require a, a lot of cash to grow. Um, you know, they're very cash generative businesses. Uh, that's one of the attractions of the business model of these types of companies. You don't tend to find those in capital intense sectors. So if you think about energy, metals, mining, uh, utilities, these are all businesses or markets that require businesses to have a lot of capital in their business models. And so if you're putting more capital in, it's harder to get an incremental return on that capital. And so we, we, we're pretty shy of being in those sectors. Um, we just don't really find much that suits our, uh, our what we're looking for. And how has that kind of helped structure the team in relation to their responsibilities, sort of given some of those sectors that you don't necessarily look in? Yeah, sure. So look, I mean, the, the, the six of us, we think that is, uh, and we're all uh, experienced, and uh, I think we've got two ch um, Harvard MBAs, uh, three chartered accountants. I think they're all CFAs apart from me. Um, so uh, they're very experienced at what they do and knowledgeable in, in uh, financial sectors. Um, and we are organized in um, into sector teams. So there's global expertise that, it, that each have in their own sector of, and of long standing. I'm the generalist as the portfolio manager. And uh, so that, that's how we kind of work together as a team. Um, but I, I would also say that this, the sort of companies that we're going to own are quite rare in the stock market, although global equities sounds like an enormous universe yeah. and is. Um, if, if you look for the, the higher rates of growth and return that we look for, uh, and we have minimum criteria, we call it 5, 10, 15. So we want 5% revenue growth, 10% EPS growth and ROE of 15% to be delivered on an average annual basis. If you screen for that, you find it eliminates over 90% of the companies that are out there. Yep. Uh, so only a very elite top decile group of companies have actually delivered on those metrics um, on average if you look back 10 years. And so we're playing in a very small pool of high quality businesses and we have the resources, adequate resources to, to cover all of that um, from the six of us. And, and, f and when you're talking about the portfolio, what's the average um, turnover within the portfolio? How long are you holding positions? Yeah, we're, we're running around the high 20s in terms of turnover. Uh, which means we have an average holding period of over three years for each of our stocks. And um, yeah, so that's, we are long-term patient investors, so that, that uh, is, fits the model. All right, well, thank you very much, Barry. That's been a, a really good insight into, into both in, in intermediate investment partners as well as the portfolio. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, Stephen. Yep.